Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, and where we have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. We're starting with the Punch newspapers, and uh, we'll be introducing our guest uh, for uh, Thursday morning in a bit. On the Punch, there you have it. Plateau Benway uh, gunmen kill 44 youths deposit corpses at government house. Eat dead bodies if you can't protect us, protests in Plateau Youths tell government officials. Protesters destroy governor's billboard. Lalong reimposes 24-hour curfew. Also on the punch, Grazing Reserves presidency knocks autumn, calls governor a serial defector. NDA, gunmen target five apartments. Federal government incompetent, says CAN, CNG and others. And also, Telecom Nigeria's data usage rises by 202% in three years. Still on the punch this morning, Super TV CEO's family petitions IG seeks new probe into murder. Kidnapping, cultism, Ogun's biggest security issue, says Abiodun. CBN threatens prosecution of Forex policy defaulters. Again, daredevil robbers attack bullion van Q2 in Ondo. And also, ter terror sponsors turning Nigeria into a Taliban country, says an uh, ex-naval chief. And NPC rejects customs proposal on petrol smog uh, smuggling stoppage. Um, I think that's all we're going to be taking on the punch. Let's now move to the Daily Trust newspapers. And so what we can also quickly find here, the big one there on your screen says, Youths dump over 20 corpses at uh, to government house. And Naguta leaders accuse herders of killing 37 members. We are not responsible, says the Fulani group. 24-hour curfew reimposed on just north. Ten suspects in custody. NDA, leaked army memo, confirms Daily Trust report on loose fence. Bandits abduct widow in Katsina 24 hours after husband's death. Also on the Daily Trust, why NNPC retail stations in neighboring countries won't stop smuggling, says Kiari. PDP crisis, governor's BOT take position on secundus. And uh, also, Delta confirms outbreak of bird flu. 164,000 birds reported dead. And DLEA sacks 35 for corruption and desertion. And now on the Guardian newspapers this morning. NDA attack, army sets up inquiry. Presidency assures of security. Um, ex naval chief alleges sponsors of insurgency known to government. Attack won't dampen military action against criminality. And also, uh, PDP charges National Assembly to summon Buhari, demands forensic investigation. Bandits may extend attack to DSS facility housing Kanu, IPOB alleges. Also on The Guardian this morning, Joss in 24 hours shut down after fresh attacks leaves 36 dead houses burnt. Youths storm assembly in government house with victims' bodies. Lalong updates Buhari says all culprits must face justice. Declare state of an emergency in northern Nigeria, says Zamfara governor. We can also find on the Guardian this morning, NNPC invests $2.7 billion in Dangote refinery. Gunmen murder eight, abduct one in Bainway, as Daria uh, kills eight in Kogi. Again, gunmen attack bullion van, kill driver and policeman in Ondo. And how Nigeria's poor airports killed over 30 airlines in 30 years. Finally, on the Daily Independent this morning, residents flee Joss City after gunmen killed more than 63 people, burnt houses. Mourners take victims' bodies to assembly, Security Council. Uh, we could also find insecurity. Cut shot your vacation. Someone Buhari, PDP charges National Assembly, calls an NGF and others to rescue Nigeria. Attack on MDA, or NDA, I beg your pardon, can't uh, dampen morale of our military, says uh, President Buhari. Gunmen kill eight persons in Bainway community. PDP governor summon emergency meeting over per party crisis. And also, presidency carpets Otom over comment on uh, grazing routes. 
Family petitions AGF, DSS, uh, police, and others over Ataga's murder. Uh, I think we're just going to squeeze in one more. Experts differ on port portfolio diversification of pension fund investments. Good morning to our guest, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Nya Etok. Thank you for joining us. All right, while we wait to connect with uh, Mr. Nya Etok uh, this morning, uh, remember it's off the press on Plus TV Africa. And um, some of the stories that we've read this morning basically uh, repeated across the papers. Uh, the big ones, of course, are from Plateau State and the Nigerian Defense Academy um, incidents. Uh, the presidency's response, and of course, the Plateau State Governor. Um, one of the papers says uh, the governor, um, you know, sends a report or you know visits the president uh, to um, uh, give a give a update. Rather, yeah, it says uh, Lalong updates Buhari says all culprits must face justice, and that's on the Guardian newspapers this morning. It's one of the things that I had earlier spoken about. You know how. You know, this is, you know, this seems to be the modus operandi for Nigerian governors these days. When there's a crisis in their states, um, you know, it doesn't seem like there is anybody from the presidency who, you know, visits these troubled areas or, you know, this, you know, send a representative. If the president doesn't go by himself, instead we find governors uh, using, of course, uh, state funds to fly to Abuja and meet with President Buhari and Shada show pictures or, you know, give updates on the situation and bump elbows, you know, because we're in a COVID-19 era. And, um, you know, that's really what it is. And I'm not sure how a lot of Nigerians see these things, you know, and what this really, you know, represents or what this tells of the reaction and, you know, how the Nigerian government really feels about some of these issues. It happened, you know, when the legal state um, uh, governor, of course, also took pictures of uh, the destruction in Lagos state back then in 2020 to the president to, of course, do the same thing, you know, bump elbows and, you know, show pictures. Good morning, Mr. Ian Talk. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. I, I hope uh, I can be heard. I've hardly heard anything so far. Oh, okay. I hope you hear. Yes, we can hear you. Can, can you hear me at all? Yes, I can hear you now. Let's start with your reaction to the crisis in Joss, uh, Plateau State. The governor, yeah. Simon Lalong, has declared another 24-hour curfew in just north. And, you know, of course, there were protests yesterday. Uh, Twenty of these dead bodies were taken to the state government house, you know, in protest. Um, so let's start with your reaction to that first. Well, I, I think it all comes down as much as possible to the concept of insecurity. And the question is, why do we have this constant insecurity? It's either what they call the head of farmer clash or they talk in terms of um, which goes into religious um, um, aspects or they are talking in terms of, um, you know, communities clashing. And that of just has been persistent. And the question is, why can't the solutions be arrived at? And from all the analyses that I've looked at from all different sites, I think politics plays a major role in all this. But at the end of the day, human lives are lost. And it all comes down, in my opinion, I always bring it to one, which is that we don't pay attention to the essence of government and governance. And I, keep, I couldn't quote this section enough, which says that the security and welfare of the people, the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. And we really need to wake up to this reality. Because we'll keep having this analysis the moment we, we have a governance structure in place that prioritizes the security and the welfare of the people, generality of the people, then we'll be able to address some of these issues. That of just is, is, is annoying in more ways than one. If some of us that are older always see just as one place that anybody would want to go and be. It would have been one investment destination in this country that would have done everybody so much good. But because of, because of the weather they have, but because of insecurity, just has become a shadow of itself. So for me, I really don't know what more analysis to do than to say that we should refocus on what we understand as government and governance, and then our leadership recruitment criteria, where people who get into office think more in terms of themselves and what will benefit them and bring them back to power and sustain them in power, not minding who's, um, uh, who, who is, who, which, which price that is being paid. 
that's the way I look at it. I wish I wish I'd followed you in the preliminary well, analysis. Well, Mr. I talk. If you're talking about the leadership recruitment process, um, that happens every four years, basically. Yes, there should be a build up to that, but. You know, we've not seen a lot of people either resign or get impeached or, you know, get uh, recalled from these positions. And so Nigerians have to leave with those consequences for four years. The challenge that we, you know, I believe we should focus on now is how these Nigerians can survive until the next leadership recruitment process. And, and so I want you to, you know, focus, you know, a little bit on the reaction of the governor of Plateau State imposing a curfew. There was a curfew before the East Killings, but he has once again, you know, reimposed that curfew, a 24-hour curfew in, in just north, and also has gone to uh, Asorok and given updates to President Muhammadu Buhari. So I want you to quickly respond to the reaction of the governor, who should be the chief security officer of the state, and also President Muhammadu Buhari. Um, the number one thing is this concept of government governors as uh, chief security officers of their state has generated a whole lot of controversy because you can't be a chief security officer when you do not control the operators of uh, enforcing the law. How do you enforce what you have no control over? So I think that's one area that everybody's clamoring for state police and all that. And um, within that context, I can feel the frustration of the governor if we are on the same page, because like I said, I seem to be answering questions that I seem to be setting for myself, as I'm not hearing too well. Well, because of the time that we have, we probably would just touch on two stories. Um, so I, I was, you know, asking that you, you know, speak with regards the uh, Plateau State governor and his um, reaction to these killings, imposing a curfew on just north. And, of course, uh, sending updates to President Muhammadu Buhari. You had earlier spoken about, you know, the failure of the, you know, you, well, him being called chief security officer when he doesn't have uh, the apparatus, you know, control over security agencies. Uh, but do you think that's a big enough excuse um, as to why the people of Plateau State are not properly uh, protected? Mr. Yato, can you hear us? I think we, of course, uh, apologize for the challenges with uh, sound this morning. It has been off the press where we have, of course, a review of the major stories across Nigeria. And, um, you know, of course, try to share as many of them from some of the you know, news uh, headlines. Um, in the, the country today. Some of them very, very sad. Of course, we shared with you uh, the crisis in Plateau State and the reaction of the government. Um, also, the PDP crisis and governors and the Board of Trustees uh, still meeting to try to resolve some of those issues. We also spoke about the Nigerian government and the Nigerian Defense Academy and uh, some of the reactions to that also. Uh, Ex-Naval Chief has also been in the news uh, sharing what his thoughts are concerning the attack on uh, the uh, Nigerian Defense Academy. Um, sometime on the breakfast this morning, we're going to be speaking with um, someone from uh, Pl Plateau State, the Director, Center for Nomadic Education in the University of Joss, and also the Commissioner for Information in Plateau State, who will be joining us sometime on the program this morning to share his thoughts on uh, the current issues in the state. Mr. Ayanto, can you hear us? Okay, well, uh, since that's obviously not working, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be sharing with you things that happened on this day in history, the 26th of August. Stay with us.